Little Britches. Father and I were ranchers. Chapter 28. Riding in the Roundup. Hey, before we get started, I did want to say hi to Alex. His mother sent me a message and said he's in the CC Challenge B, and he loves reading along while listening to me. Alex, thanks so much for being there. And I hope you're getting a lot out of these uh, CC Challenge books. Let's begin. Riding Hayrake and Stacker Horse were kind of monotonous after being at the mountain ranch with High and the cattle. If it hadn't been for the evenings, I don't think I would have liked it at all. Before High went back to the mountains, he told me I would have to ride sky high every night if I wanted him to remember all the things I had taught him during the spring and that I ought to keep him in practice on cutting and roping by working on the young stock in the home pasture. There were about 20 men around the place during haying. Eight or nine of them were cowhands who weren't needed with the stock through the summertime. And the rest were hands that Mr. Cooper had hired in Denver. All the cowhands were getting ready for the 4th of July roundup at Littleton. They always had roundups at the fairgrounds on the 4th of July and Labor Day and there were prizes for bronco busting, horse racing, trick riding, and roping. Mr. Cooper liked to have the YB fellows win prizes at the roundups, and he kept 10 or a dozen outlaw horses at the home place so the men could keep in practice. I wanted to try to ride a couple of them. They didn't seem to buck as hard as Prince used to, but Mr. Cooper wouldn't let me. And every night, he had one of the fellows ride with me when I was practicing with Sky High. Usually it was Tom Brogan. He wasn't very good at busting, but he could make a rope do more funny tricks than a monkey on a grapevine. I learned to do some rope tricks from him, but he couldn't make his old sorrel do tricks like High's Blue, and I never could seem to keep Sky in step with him. Mr. Cooper had High come in from the mountain ranch about the end of June so he could get some practice on the outlaws before they round up. From then till the 4th, High practiced with me three or four hours a day. Mr. Cooper saw us riding together the first night after High came in from the mountains. And after that, he sent Tom Brogan to ride the stacker horse at about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and I had the rest of the day with High. There wasn't any haying on the 4th of July, and everybody went to the roundup early in the forenoon. I rode sky high, and I didn't have to stay in the grandstand either like the other kids. High took me right out into the middle of the horse track oval, where they had the bronco busting and bulldogging and calf roping. High won first prize in the bronco busting, and Tom Brogan in calf roping, but it was the trick riding that I liked best. One girl crawled clear around her horse under his belly and back into the saddle while he was on the dead run. Another one stood with her feet in loops of straps on the saddle pommel and rode all the way around the racetrack without losing her balance. And there were at least a dozen men riders who did all kinds of stunts, from going under a running horse to sliding off over one's tail and jumping back into the saddle. After everything else was over, the man with the megaphone shouted, The last number on our program! will be an exhibition of matched pair riding by High Beckman and Little Britches of the YB Spread. Bring them out, High! High hadn't told me we were going to ride. Tom Brogan picked me up by one arm in the hind end of my chaps and tossed me into my saddle, but my legs were shaking so I could hardly get my feet in the stirrups. Then. Somebody opened the gate and let us out onto the racing strip in front of the grandstand. It was a good thing I'd had those few afternoons to ride with High, because I was so mixed up at first that Sky High pretty nearly had to do everything by himself. I didn't help him much till it came to the end, where we went up to the grandstand changing leads so that it looked as if both horses were dancing. As we went up, High said, Grab your hat off, little britches, when you see me grab mine. I did, and the people in the stands yelled louder than they did when Fred Altland's bays won the trotting race. All I could think of was that I wished Father could have been there to hear it. 
All the YB fellows went uptown to Monahan's saloon as soon as the roundup was over, and I went with them. Sky High didn't like going up Main Street very well and kept bobbing his head and dancing, but it was the doctor's horseless carriage that really scared him. He crow hopped right up onto the sidewalk in front of Schellenbarger's market, and he was still trembling when I left him ground tied at the hitching rail by Monahan's. I was about as nervous as Sky High because I knew Mother wouldn't want me going into a saloon. Anyway, not unless I had to go in to see the sheriff. I sat me up on the middle of the bar, and lots of fellows came and shook hands with me and called me Little Britches and wanted to buy me birch beer and sarsaparilla. But all the time, I seemed to be hearing Mother's voice as it was down there by the creek when she recited, So live that when thy summons comes. I had to talk about something to get that out of my head, so I said to Hi, I'll bet we could do some stunts pretty near as good as those trick riders. I can do that diving trick and come up on my feet like you did when Mother and I were planting tomatoes. Then I told him about practicing it in the sandy spot when I was hurting Mrs. Corcoran's cows. When we got back to the home ranch, everyone wanted to see me do it, even Mr. Cooper. And I almost wished I hadn't said anything about it. With Fanny, I'd always done the diving stunt bareback, and she never spooked or changed direction when I was starting my dive. I knew it would be a lot different to do from a saddle, and I was afraid I might get a foot caught in a stirrup or that sky high might spook so that I'd land square on my head. I guess High was thinking about the same things. Anyway, he wouldn't let me try it till we went out in the middle of the plowed field, and then he led sky high the first couple of times. I hadn't tried the stunt since about a month before we lost Fanny, and Sky didn't run very well on the plowed ground, so I kind of messed up the first couple of tries. After that, Hi let me try it alone, and it went better. From there on to the end of August, I don't think I always gave the man who was paying me a good day's work the way Father told me. Hi went back to the mountain ranch with the cattle, and we hardly got one cutting of alfalfa put up before another was ready to be started. But a couple of mornings every week, Mr. Cooper would say we had to go up to the mountains to see how the cattle were getting along, and that I could go with him if I wanted to. Of course, I always wanted to and Hi would spend two or three hours practicing stunts with me. There were only two of them that were hard to learn, and we practiced them both a dozen times whenever I went to the mountains, and on Saturday afternoons when Hi came into the home place. For one of them, Hi would have me stand facing him, and then he'd take Sky Blue back a hundred yards to give him a good start and come pounding down past me. As he came, he'd lean over in the saddle and stick one arm out straight, I'd stick my arm out straight, too. If I kicked my off leg up just at the instant our arms met, and if we got a handhold on each other's arms, I'd go flying right up back of his cantle. The trouble was that I had to kick my leg up before our arms really came together. Whenever they missed, or we didn't get a good handhold, I'd turn a somersault without using my arms. My face got skinned up a little at first, but after a few days... I'd sail up back of the saddle nearly every try. The only other hard one was the one where High swung me. We practiced that one first with a jockey pole between the two horse bridles so that they would have to run side by side without any guiding. We tied our lines around the saddle horns, and when the horses were going lickety-cut, I'd put both arms over my head and lean toward High. He'd lean toward me with one arm looped up over his head, and we'd get a wrist hold. Then he'd jerk me out of my saddle and swing me over his head so that at the top of the swing, I was doing a handstand at the end of his upstretched arms. I had to bounce and jump when my feet hit the ground on the offside of his horse so that he could swing me back into my own saddle again. It wasn't nearly as hard as it was scary, and we only made two or three bobbles before it worked as smooth as a stream of warm milk. One thing that helped was I weighed only 70 pounds. Of course, the big danger was that if the horses didn't stay side by side, there wouldn't be any saddle there for me to come down into. After the first few days, though, both roans knew the trick just as well as we did. So from there on, we practiced without the jockey pole. At first, I didn't want to tell Father anything about our new tricks or that Hi and I were planning to ride in the Labor Day Roundup. I was afraid he might say I was taking unnecessary chances. Every time I thought about it, 
I'd feel sneaky and remember about that day I stole the chocolate bar and what he said to me out there by the chopping block and how much I liked to have him walk out to the gate with me and say, so long, partner, when I went back to Cooper Sunday nights. So I told him that first Saturday night after the 4th of July before I even got the saddle off sky high. I didn't tell him just what the tricks were, but I did say that High would look out that I didn't get hurt. Mother didn't want me to ride in the roundup, but I kind of think Father did. He didn't really tell me I could until the last Sunday. Then, he didn't really tell me. There was a paper that everybody had to sign before they could go into the contest. It was something about riding at your own risk, and I wasn't old enough to sign it. So Father would have to if I was going to ride. And I think we'll pause here and finish reading this chapter next time. Till then, as Tigger says, ta-ta for now. Thanks so much for watching. I love you guys. Bye-bye.